Don't you guys hate it when you run out of pH solution, like API general test kits or API test kit strips for your pH? Well, I'm going to show you how by raiding your neighbor's garden or spending a couple bucks or maybe even just looking in your own cabinets, you can make your own pH testing solution. You can make your own litmus test that will test the entire uh, pH scale basically in color for you, just like the test strips. So let me show you how it's done. All right, so we have everything we need. We've got the uh, red cabbage, we've got the red onion, we've got some blueberries, which are really high in athetoscin and anthocyanin. And then we also have the distilled uh, arrowhead water and the vinegar, white vinegar. Oh, and some Oreos that I'll be hiding under the seat so my wife doesn't know. That's not important for the test. That's just important for my sanity. All right, let's go home and do some science. So the only real thing you need for this, because you could use rainwater or RO, reverse osmosis water, or any completely neutral water. Now, a lot of drinking water has been fortified with minerals, and it's not exactly neutral. But if you have a really good filtration system, or you live in an area where your rain happens to be neutral, or you know your tap water is almost always neutral, then this is literally the only thing you need. You need uh, a red or purple cabbage, uh, whatever you want to call them. doesn't matter if it's organic or not. In fact, probably non-organic has more intense uh, coloration generally, so why not go with that? Now, you could also use a red onion. Now, the reason for this is because they contain a chemical called anthocyanins. Now, anthocyanins are really interesting, and they're what make blueberries blue. And when you cook blueberries, if you've ever looked, when you simmer them down for a pie or something, a lot of times when they first cook, they'll turn a very, very nice kind of crimsony, almost red, dark purple color. And if you add baking soda for like a pie, uh, you'll notice that the concoction turns almost a blue color. Well, that is the exact same thing that's going on. Anthocyanin is able to detect how many parts hydrogen are in the water because it bonds in a predictable scale. And the, the same chemical that plants and birds and fish actually use to produce the color blue in their body pigments, almost always they use this same chemical, uh, is in these veggies. And you can chop them up and then you can cook them, uh, boil them in water for about 20 or 30 minutes, uh, and then strain out the debris and you'll be left with a purple color liquid and that is the anthocyanins uh, in the water. And there's other alkaloids, but that is the part we need. So let's chop these up, boil them for half an hour, and let these chemicals do their magic work. All right, so as you would guess, we're actually looking for the purple part of the plant. So the outer leaves have the darkest purple generally, although it may be all the way through. But we can usually kind of cut away this core. I'm not even using a whole head of this red cabbage or lettuce. Uh, anything that is purple and very dense in the purple will work for this that's in the veggie category or fruit category for that matter. You can use the skin of grapes for this same trick. So we're gonna cut this up and then we're gonna get it boiling. All right, one more side note is this can make a purple mess. So uh, don't use your wife's favorite wooden cutting board. Not that I did that or anything. Cut. All right, so you're going to want to use distilled water, like I said, and that's just so there's nothing that's going to bond with our reagent or our indicator solution we're making. So just add as much water as you're going to need to submerse approximately that head of cabbage or onion or whatever it is you use. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put those cut up pieces into here and we are going to let it simmer. The heat is not going to destroy anthocyanins, which is a nice handy fact. Also, side note, if you're ever really thirsty and you're drinking distilled water, uh, add salt because uh, some sort of electrolyte is needed uh, in the form of potassium, magnesium, salt, uh, and it can actually dehydrate you by uh, washing the salts out of your system. Not that I learned that the hard way at... Uh, what was it, Lollapalooza 2003 or whatever it was? 
Yeah. Not that I learned that or anything. All right, moving on. So let's go get the cabbage now that it's all nice and chopped up. And we just want to put it into our little uh, bowl here. And uh, I'm doing this one-handed, so I'm going to stop because uh, I think I've already told you enough errors that have been made in this video. All right, so once we've added our cabbage to our water, now it's time to just let it simmer. Uh, just get it to a boil, and then you can just put it on to simmer. Now, our cutting board, look at all the dye that's in there. Now, that is anthocyanins, carotenoids, athdaskin, and other uh, xanthophyll uh, pigments that are the same things that are in food that say color enhancing for your fish, which is just an interesting side note uh, that that is the kind of stuff that does actually, in fact, enrich their color and exist in insects and algae and all sorts of other things that our fish consume. So now figure out how to clean this and your purple hands and let this simmer for a while. And while we do that, I'm going to show you a quick test to show you if your rocks or hardscape are, are basic. So I'm going to show you a real quick trick with another household item to see if your substrate is basic. All right. So if you're trying to figure out if a rock is going to be, uh, basic rather than acidic so if it's going to cause your kh and gh to increase in your aquarium if it's going to cause your tds to rise well you can check it just with distilled white vinegar so i've got a little cap of it here and we're going to put some in a spoon and uh, we're going to start with a rock that shouldn't anyways be reactive and we're going to put a little bit of vinegar on it and we shouldn't be seeing any foaming or anything like that and with kind of a quartzite yeah we don't now we're going to put a little bit up on the next stone and it is foaming away because it is limestone now it's not going to go crazy for a long time but it will kind of uh do its thing for a little while kind of ran down and it'll keep foaming in the areas <clears throat> if you can see it you'll see the bubbles acting as it touches new areas as it's reacting now the last one we're going to do see if we got enough in here we can is going to be the most reactive in the sense of long-term shells and uh if you've got things like uh cuddle bone from the pet store even if it's not foaming like crazy what you're looking at is you're looking at the activity you're looking at the little moving pieces and that is telling you that it is reactive even though these are old pieces of coral and shells they have a ton of calcium and a ton of carbon in them and calcium carbonate which what is that it basically uh, the constituent ingredients of baking soda is what's reacting to the vinegar, just like when you put baking soda and vinegar together. Our concoction brewing over here is going to be doing well. We can put, we can, we can lower this. Just let it simmer. Let some of the uh, water reduce out of there, especially if it's not going nuts. Uh, the the water will become more and more purple. You can mash it if you want. Uh, it's no big deal. You're mostly releasing water, but this is the final stage before filtering. We can already see how purple that water is getting. Well, if I didn't fog up my camera, let's see here. We can see that that water is getting a deep, dark purple. So that's what we want. So we'll keep doing this for another 20 minutes, 15 minutes. And this little uh, vinegar trick uh, is just nice if you're out collecting wood or coral or shells. If you're curious if it's going to react in your aquarium and make your water harder, if it's going to make your water uh, higher in its pH, like move it from 7.0 to say 8.5 or 8.8, .8, something like that, because you only want that for certain fish. 
So let's finish this up and I'll show you what you can do with this so that you can use it in the aquarium or fish room uh, multiple times and find out some pretty cool stuff. All right, so we've got it simmering. It's been about 30 minutes. Went in there, kind of mashed it up a little bit. I'm gonna turn off the heat. And uh, now that the whole house smells like butt and uh, we don't have a fan to get rid of the humidity, so now we have cabbage smelling soup essentially all over the house, uh, we're pretty much good to go. So just let this cool naturally. And uh, one cool thing is that is cellulose, lignin, tannins, DNA all together. And uh, most of vegetative matter is water. So we're going to strain that out, strain all that fluffy stuff out. You can use a coffee filter, you can use cheesecloth, but let it cool first. Strain it out into a jar. I'll meet you once we've done that. All right, so we have the mash left over. That's it. There's a little bit of liquid that'll form uh, on here, and we're getting the last few drain bits out of it just trying out different pieces of paper to turn into test kits basically into test strips and you can see this one's turning blue so it probably has something uh basic in it in the binding of the paper it's actually really blue down here and then up here this one's actually turning a little pink which would indicate more acidic so the paper towel probably has something acidic to it so uh we're trying out different stuff construction paper and different printer paper it's kind of pretty anyways but look at the main liquid strained out i mean this stuff is such a dark purple that you can't even see through it don't spill it on your clothes that's for sure uh but yeah so now we're gonna try out a few drops of this in test tubes of different pH liquids and see what happens. All right, so which tanks to test? I think first we're gonna test this one. There is very little uh, substrate in it, and so it's not buffered by much. It's just sand, inactive substrate. Usually runs pretty acidic. I've got some baby garamis in here. Then we'll go to the top of the list and get a really acidic one with some garamis in black water up here wild garamis and a wild betta tank then let's do these guys they're moderately hard but not like crazy hard should be around 7.5 or 8 uh, with these live bears in it and then let's do one last hard tank this one should be really hard 8.6 or so this is my tanganyika ish slash african rift tank and then we'll get one more just for fun in here let's do this one the co2 is running on it i think this will be an interesting one we'll see if the co2 has made it more acidic and i guess i'll just pull it from here it's like i got an iv all right so now let's go see if this concoction really works all right so we've got our little laboratory testing grounds and a straw so let's try uh putting a few drops in just some aquarium water that i gathered so we're gonna just let a few drops go into here maybe a few more i don't know what is that five it's gonna depend totally on your the the quality of of how much you extracted and your actual um, plants, whether it's an onion or whether you use something else. But we're gonna add, you know, a few drops, see what happens, a few less to this one. And we'll do like, let's, let's do a similar amount in this one here too. And then we're gonna leave it be and see what happens. Now over in here, we should have a more acidic solution. So it should be turning kind of red or pink oh yeah look at that compared to the others it is like strawberry pink so this was from a, a more of like a black water setup the ph in this is down in the like probably four or five range i mean we'll have to figure out but i'm curious now if we add more to it let's see if we can actually get it back to purple 
So it looks like you actually have a pretty wide range of how much you can put in with it. Um, and it's going to stick with that color. So it's not turning more purple as I added more. It's, it's just getting brighter red. So then over here, this should turn like a blue or a green. Because what this is, is the, the Tanganyikan tank. And so it's got lots of shells in it. And what do we get out of this one? Oh yeah, we got a beautiful, whoops, added a little bit too much, but look at that beautiful blue. It's like a purple and a blue. From the top, it actually looks like a green. Let's see if we can get this, if I can show you guys this uh, in the light. It's, it's a really nice green color. Um, let's put the cap on it and shake it all up and see what happens. It's hard to do all this one-handed, but I want to do it in real time so you guys can see. Yeah, it's like a nice bluish green turquoise color. So what does all this mean? What have I just done? I mean, these these look. this one looks close to just a little bit reddish purple to pink, so maybe slightly acidic. This looks purple, which is close to the main color, but then look at these ones. I wish you guys could see these actual colors. Uh, this is very close to a neon pink, and this is like a turquoise more than the blue that I'm sure it's showing up as on the screen right now. Uh, either way, I'll leave a key uh, for it, but this is a whole giant batch from half a uh, cabbage that now you can store and uh, just keep it unoxidized, so keep it airtight. Uh, you can refrigerate it as well, and you can test the pH of solutions. And so let me show you a wider range of things. Let's get a few like way off the chart type things and compare to like these are tank level colors. Let's get some way off the chart like orange juice or something like that. Let's try to find that and compare. So I let these sit for 30 minutes and the colors haven't really changed. Now they will change over time as the thing, as the different compounds decompose. But you can see that uh, the purple kind of sinks down a little bit. We'll try adding a little bit more just to see what happens. It doesn't seem to d dilute the sample at all. Um, it more seems to refresh the color, if that makes any sense. Like you're not getting any new color out of it so it's very accurate it stays right on the color track that you are are looking at it just gets brighter again so this actually has a far wider range than uh the test kits that you get uh from api or the all-in-one type uh strips that, that test for a little bit of everything those really test in a specific range from like 6 to 8.5 or something like that around that and then you have to get special test strips to zero in on closer things this goes all the way down from a 1 all the way up to 12 13 almost to 14 accurately and you can see that it is subtle in the difference between like these um, you might need to hold something white up behind it like the piece of paper that I have would be a better choice but you can see this one's a little more purple in the middle this one's a little more uh, fuchsia all right, everybody, I hope you liked that little experiment we just did. Uh, I want to show you guys the chart of what it is you're looking for uh, in the colors. So what the pH will be uh, is going to be on the screen here. And you can see that on the uh, horizontal scales, those are for red cabbage or anthocyanin. So you could use grape skins, you could use beets, you could use anything that's purple, blue colored in the in nature or, the, or like a dark crimson and extract that pretty much, um, anything with the anthocyanin in it. And as long as it's opaque enough or concentrated enough that you don't see through it in a jar when you hold it up to the light in the kitchen, 
you should be good to go uh, and be able to use it and use that same scale accurately. However, you're not using the scale that you just Google a pH uh, litmus, litmus test or litmus paper or reagent uh, scale because that is going to be a totally different color spectrum for each pH as you can see on there. Now, most of the pHs you're going to find are going to be within probably 6 to Nine. If you have some really hard water with tanganikins and uh, or or live bears or something that likes that hard water or brackish water, something like that, you may end up there. And the main thing to realize is that this test is going to tell you if it stays purple, it's pretty close to a seven or neutral. If it goes down into the uh, redder fuchsia hues, you're getting acidic. And if it goes uh, kind of an electric purple, uh, you know that you're getting more acidic also. And that's probably the range you're going to be in, in that like 6.0 range, unless you're doing something like breeding bettas or black water or something like that. Now, uh, on the up, upper range of basic, you're going to be turning blue and then green uh, if you if you get really intense into it green so really you're going to be looking at nuances between those colors but there are charts that break it down even more i just wanted you guys to get the idea here that you can save some money and that it's a pretty cool way to do it so i hope you guys enjoyed this kind of video and i hope you all uh give it a like subscribe if you like this kind of content and stay tuned for the next video which is going to be on how to test nutrients fertilizers uh and uh macro and micro elements in your aquarium without test equipment also uh, nothing as complicated as this just by looking for clues and hints so if you like this kind of content uh, give it a thumbs up like I said you guys know what to do and if you really want to support the channel so I can buy crazy things and ingredients and do odd tests like this um, you can for $1.99 and you also get an extra 16 to 20 episodes a month on the latest news in fish, science, and history. Uh, anything related to the aquarium hobby we cover on episodes of Fishtree, which is audio-based and comes out every Monday. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys next time. Take care and goodbye.